in our seventh week of what the U.S. military is calling strategic separation, it is indeed good and a blessing to worship together, for we are together in spirit. Pastor Jenny and I have been in touch with many of you over the last few weeks, and I just want to say how inspired and impressed we've been by your response to these difficult times. The sense of spiritual centeredness and groundedness that we've gotten from you, your desire to serve, your compassion, your strength, your courage, but also your honesty about hard feelings and hard times has been truly inspiring. You're probably wondering what I'm doing sitting in my easy chair in my Yale sweats. That's because I wanted to talk today for a little bit about comfort. Comfort's been a question for many of us in these difficult times. How do we feel comforted when things can be so confusing and difficult? How do we comfort ourselves and how are we comforted by God? Of course, it fits with today's scriptures because today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Every year on this fourth Sunday of Easter, the images are of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. We always say Psalm 23. We sing Psalm 23 songs. This great scripture of comfort that is perhaps more than any other the place we turn when things are difficult. And I was asking myself, why does this text feel so comforting? I like the images of God making me rest, God leading me, God restoring my soul, God being with me, God's goodness and mercy surrounding me. We all need to know sometimes, especially in difficult times, that God cares for us. God cares for us not because we're virtuous or accomplished, not because of anything we do, but just because. God knows it hasn't been easy, and so God gives us rest. God knows we felt confused, so God leads us. God knows our batteries are almost dead, so God restores our souls. God knows we feel alone and confused, so God goes with us on dangerous paths. And God knows we're worried, so God promises us goodness and mercy throughout our lives. They're comforting words, and I'm a big fan of comfort. I like comfortable clothes, which I've had on much more now that I don't have to put on a tie to go to the office. I like comfort food. Many of you may have been feeling a strong desire for macaroni and cheese or something like that in these last weeks. I like a comfortable day when I'm about to bolt out of bed because I think I'm late and realize it's Saturday and I can roll over and pull the covers over my head. And we all need some comfort these days when fear, worry, loss, or disruption have left us feeling agitated, depressed, or even angry. A slice of cheesecake seems to me to be a rational response to a day of difficult feelings. Something sweet, something familiar, something safe and good. But I've been thinking about that kind of comfort as my solution to my feelings and how it may work for a day or a couple of days, but that kind of comfort in quantity becomes a problem. I may want to pull the covers over my head today, but if I do it every day, Pastor Jenny is probably going to have to make an intervention. And sometimes I think the way I listen to Psalm 23 is a macaroni and cheese kind of scripture. I can say it to myself over and over again, and I do feel better, but I think there's more to it than just self-soothing. The message of the psalm is not just resting into God's comforting present. It doesn't just leave us where we are feeling a little better. The image is really about shepherd and sheep, and that's not confusing. I'm the sheep, God is the shepherd. And that what comforts me in the scripture is not the things I do to soothe myself. Instead, it's a rod and a staff. He leadeth me, the psalm says. He makes me. To 
get the deep spiritual comfort I think Psalm 23 is talking about, I have to let myself be led. I have to let go of my idea of comfort and the shield, the wall it builds around me and let the one who loves me direct me. But being led goes against my hunger for my own definition and sense of comfort. I'm holding on tight these days to the ways I'm making meaning in a chaotic time. I'm falling back on deep resources that may not always be the best for me. Oftentimes rooted in my deepest fears and my deepest griefs, I'm going back to ways I know to deal with crisis. And I think what the Psalm is pointing us towards is something very different. Being led, I think, means letting go. It means receiving a rest and a restoration I can't give myself. It's not the old idea that God has a plan, but that God wants me to let go of my plan because that plan is no longer working. I'm looking for a deeper, fuller comfort. Not just some idea that I can go back to the way things were, because the way things were, if I remember correctly, wasn't great. I'm wondering, I'm looking for a kind of comfort where I can wake up every day assured that I am loved and cared for, accompanied in whatever comes. Real comfort means I'm ready this day for all my plans to go out the window, as they probably will. Real comfort means not a return to an imagined easier past, which really wasn't easier or better, but the knowledge that I might have to walk through the valley of the shadow today and that God is with me. Genuine comfort, I don't think, is like macaroni and cheese, but we know the taste because we've been yearning for it for centuries. We've been singing about it. We've been praying for it. We've been hearing about it in our scriptures. It is righteousness and mercy. It is justice and peace. It is the restoration of my soul. I'm wondering if Comfort these days means being ready for a new direction. Being ready for God to offer me something from deep within myself that speaks deeply to me, but also speaks to the power of God's kingdom. And that that might not be the thing that I turn to when I need to self-soothe, but might be something new and deep and wonderful. And that's where I'm asking to be led. Amen.